Hello my friends and welcome back to the rabbit hole and welcome finally to another episode of what's new in skincare. Yeah, my bad about there not being one of these videos in the month of December. You know, the holidays. It's understandable. But that does indeed mean we kind of have a lot to cover in today's video, so let's go ahead and get started. Really quickly, if you are new to this channel, this series is talking all about new skincare releases, a little bit of skincare news, and I mostly segment this video by price point. So check the description box below if you are only interested in a certain range, and I will also have links to all of the products that I am discussing. So let's go ahead and start off today's video with products at the drugstore. You probably saw this if you follow me on Instagram, but I did buy actually the three-piece kit here, or set rather, of the new e.l.f. Pure Skin line. This is a really an intriguing line to me. First of all, the whole thing for me, my entire e.l.f. order was $24. They have a 20% off if you buy three skincare items promotion going on right now, so I figured, why not? Sounds like the perfect products for me. They're all fragrance-free, they're all dermatologist-developed, they say, and with oat milk, allantoin, and niacinamide. Basically, they looked perfect for sensitive skin. I have a little bit more of a sensitive skin type myself, and I've loved so many of e.l.f.'s skincare products. So I'm not gonna say too much more at this point, as I'm doing a full trial with these. It will now be a three-week trial. So I will have that posted, not this upcoming Monday, but the Monday after. Please don't hold it to me if one of these products doesn't work out for me. Uh, at the moment, I'm continuing to test two products. I will come back to the one that I'm unsure of, and uh, you know, hopefully I can give a, a thorough review. That's certainly my point in doing the extended trials, is to give a very thorough review and, you know, ultimately, Nothing works for everyone, nothing. But at this point, it's a little too early for me to tell you, so we'll just save all of that. Then we have from The Ordinary, their new salicylic acid 2%. Okay, listen, at least some of you have to be saying, wait a minute, didn't The Ordinary just release the 2% salicylic acid? <laughs> Yo, that's a little confusing, but here's the deal. The one that released in December was the Anhydra Solution, the Squalane Base, and this one is not. I have decided not to purchase this immediately, as I did buy the Anhydra Solution. I'll link you my video if you're interested in seeing that in action. Uh, so I'm, uh, yeah, I don't see a reason to immediately run out and purchase this, and I think the interesting thing is I've seen a lot of other people say the same thing. I've seen a lot of people say, uh, you know, that's really nice, I liked the old, the ordinary salicylic acid from years ago, but I've, I've found other products. It's interesting to see so many people say that because that is my experience too. I have so many other options at this point, whereas I too was devastated when The Ordinary originally discontinued this product. But uh, yeah, it's finally back after making us wait for actually years, years. You know, if you have acne, you can't go that long without a product that really works as a treatment for you. So it's just really interesting. And also, for the record, I do like the anhydrous version, but maybe that's because I have a more dry skin type. Let's talk about Flower Beauty's new release next. Oh man, yeah, this is actually a video about skincare. I promise this is not a makeup video. So Flower Beauty has released their Fight the Light Blue Light Protection Mist. Oh, Drew. Drew, I love you so much. I really do. I love Flower Beauty so much. Uh, but this is really interesting to me. I feel like this is what happens when a brand that is primarily focused on makeup tries to do skincare also. Uh, there's probably nothing wrong with this product, but... Ooh, blue light. Oh my goodness. Ever since we had the controversy a couple of months ago, you all remember it? I have not seen any of the skincare first brands promoting blue light protection. How fascinating. This was such a big thing in the skincare circles, and yet uh, I don't really think it extended into the makeup world, and why would it? Long story short on whether you need to be worried about blue light. So uh, sunscreen. Sunscreen protects you from UV rays. If you're really concerned, you may want to try a tinted sunscreen product, a tinted moisturizer, or a foundation as 
Iron oxides may also protect you from blue light. But these, this idea of needing specific extra ingredients, it, it's, it's been marketing for a while. And then we have a new release from one of my favorite brands, Versed Skincare. This is the Smooth Landing Advanced Retinoid Eye Balm. Nice price here, $17.99. Okay, so they have Grand Active Retinoid at 1% in here, bearing in mind that means the complex of Grand Active Retinoid, black currant seed oil at 1% and 0.2% shiitake mushroom extract. As per usual, I think that Versed really nails making these products that are perfect for people with a more sensitive skin type, more for beginners, very beginner friendly products. This isn't extremely high levels, and yet the thing is, if you use Verse products, I feel that most people will see results. I certainly did. And I think it's, it's a great thing that they are disclosing these low percentages as it can help people to figure out, oh, you know, maybe I don't need these incredibly high levels of these ingredients to see results. It also is really interesting to see HPR in an eye cream or an eye balm in this case. You don't see that every day. It's typically, it's typically retinol or <laughs> sometimes the retinol derivatives. I also really want to grab this one. The first ingredient is shea butter, which is exactly what you would expect in a balm product. So I bet it, oh, I bet it feels wonderful on dry eyes. Ugh, $17.99, gotta love Versed. While we're on the Versed website and actually moving into the next chapter, which is body products, let's talk about this very interesting release. The Firm Ground Retinol Body Lotion, how intriguing. I haven't yet seen a company actually come out with a retinol product that is made for the body, so this is very interesting. In contrast to the eye balm, this one is a retinol product at 0.1%, again, a great beginner level. Oh, wait, no, oh, sorry. Oh, I caught myself there. That is actually a retinol blend. So this is gonna be quite a low level of retinol, but again, you probably haven't been using retinol all over your body. Maybe some of you have, but I haven't. So I think that is a good starting level there. We have cocoa butter, squalene, and vitamin E. The one thing I have to wonder with retinol on the body is how long would it take to see results? I would say, I know I've talked about this a lot, but I feel like retinol is one of those ingredients where I do feel it takes me longer to see results than some other products. However, uh, your body skin, it's thicker. So would it take longer? I really don't know the answer to that, by the way. And by the way, since we're talking about Versed with both of these products, they are fragrance-free. Versed was not originally a fragrance-free brand, but they have certainly gone in that direction. Yeah, this looks like a nice release. Good for them for figuring out something that, you know, really doesn't exist on the market. And then just a couple of body products really quickly. If you can't tell on this channel, I tried to spend this entire week preparing for today's video. So two more quick releases here. The Kosa Sport Good Body Skin. I bought this back in, oh no, I bought this in November. Did you all get the same amazing deal? Did you get your freebie from Kosas? I couldn't resist this. $18, nine fluid ounces, AHA and enzyme exfoliating wash. I had to try it. This one is not a fragrance-free product, but I actually quite like the smell of it. They say notes of jasmine, sandalwood, and vanilla. I always like jasmine smells, always. It's a pretty light scent, it doesn't linger throughout the day. The main thing with this is I don't know the percentage of glycolic la gly <laughs> glycolic acid and lactic acid. Tripping on my tongue, what is going on over here? But anyway, yeah, I don't know the percentage. I feel like it might be kind of lower than I anticipated. It feels very gentle, but again, that might be a really great option, especially for a daily body wash. It is really nice. It's well done and affordable. I can't figure out Kosas. How is this $18 for nine fluid ounces? But you look at some of their makeup products and it certainly feels mid-range. Or I, I, they don't make sense to me. Is it the, the sport line is less expensive? So random. And then of course the Kopari KP Body Bumps Be Gone product. I did get this in PR and I do have a video talking all about it that I will link. We are loving this in this house. I have to keep going to uh, Ara's shower. Ara takes showers and I take baths. And thankfully we have each right now. I have to keep going in there to get this back out of the shower so I can use it. And then she keeps coming into my bathtub and she's like, where's the purple bottle? 
we're fighting over this. It is our, our household favorite. It's very well done. See the video for more. Moving on to Korean skincare. Oh, we have some exciting releases in this category. So first of all, I have been testing out a new product from I'm From. This is the Honey Lip Balm. I received this complimentary from YesStyle. Okay, so some of you may be able to predict how I feel about this. Give it a shot. What do you think? 50-50. Love it or hate it? Like, I gave so many contextual clues already. You can tell I love this product, right? I love it. I love it. I love the honey mask. I will eventually haul for you the honey serum as well, which I also like, but I don't think that one is for everybody. This lip balm, oh my goodness. It's interesting, there's not much of a smell to this one, and yet there, there is a, a light flavor aspect to it. You know, just, just to be clear, we're not over here eating our lip balms, but I think you end up kind of getting a, a little bit of a, a taste for them, right? You, you do, right? Please tell me it's not just me. I don't, I don't think it's just me. And you know, I really owe it to the Cosarex lip balm, the completely unscented, unflavored, just straightforward ceramide lip balm. I owe it to that for making me realize that I like a little bit of flavor in my lip balm. It's okay if you do, it's okay if you don't. This one gives me a little bit of flavor and it is such, such a nourishing and healing lip balm. I guess maybe it comes down to does honey work out for you because it is just wondrous for my skin and lo and behold, it's wondrous for my lips also. I haven't made a K-Beauty order since December as uh, you know, I made quite a few in order to make that Korean beauty uh, retailer comparison, but whenever I make another order, there is absolutely a product that I will be buying from my number one favorite brand, Beauty of Joseon. Ew, if you're new, I'm not just throwing that out there. I, I've ranked my top 10 brands. Beauty of Joseon is actually my favorite brand. So we have the Green Plum Refreshing Cleanser. <gasps> I want to try it so badly. They say this is a low pH cleanser, which I do think tends to work out better for my skin. Moist gel texture, calming ingredients, green plum and mung bean seed extract. It's Beauty of Joseon, which is a much more affordable brand, so not a bad price. Yeah, I absolutely, I will be trying that one in the future. The next thing I want to talk about is an expansion of an entire line. So I had quite a few questions about this back in December, and I'm perplexed as to what's going on. Let me let me tell you what it is. So the Pyongyang Yule Black Tea line. So you know how they have the eye cream that's been quite popular for a while now. Yeah, they seem to have expanded that, but it's not yet available at the Korean retailers, at least on U.S. sites, and yet it is available on Amazon. So we have the Black Tea Time Reverse Eye Patches, the Black Tea Deep Infusion Toner. The prices on these are quite high compared to some of the other Pyongyang Yule products, although still not bad, mid-range prices. The Black Tea Boosting Serum and the Black Tea Enriched Cream. Yeah, I'm really perplexed by this. I, I feel like I don't know at all what's going on. Again, I'm not typically as up to date on Korean beauty, although I'm trying. You, you see my efforts, right? But that's really strange. A lot of this stuff says uh, currently unavailable, and yet the, the cream itself is in stock, but there is absolutely no reviews. I don't know. Let me know if you know more about this product line. I would definitely be interested in trying it, though, because if nothing else, even though I just said it's expensive for Pyongyang Yule, is this going to be alternatives to the fresh black tea line? because the fresh line is a lot more expensive. So I guess on that one, your questions are the same as mine. I don't have any added insider information on what's going on there. But we also do have one more new release from, well, actually two more new releases from Purito. These are brand new. They released this week. We have both the Hydrop Sweet Gel Mask and the Bentolin Pore Clay Mask. So these are both up on the YesStyle website as of now. Uh, looks like they're almost sold out too, which I'm not surprised. Purito is such a popular brand. So let's just talk about these two masks individually. First up, we have the Hydrop Sweet Gel Mask, which looks like it has quite an interesting texture. But again, I've already talked to you about how I love honey. This is a 15-minute mask that has PHA in the form of gluconolactone in it, as well as some humectant and emollient ingredients. Yeah, I would, I would definitely try this one. This looks right for my skin type. 
The other one is the Bentolin Pore Clay Mask, which looks to be a more standard clay mask. Here we have kaolin and bentonite clay, volcanic ash, charcoal powder. Yeah, it looks like a, a more standard mask. But again, a benefit with both of these is that they are fragrance-free, essential oil-free, vegan, cruelty-free. And those are quite nice sizes for currently between $20 and $22, again, over on the yes Style website. I have a code if you're interested. I'll have it on the screen and then in the description box below as well. Moving into the mid-range, high-end section of the video. So, I did manage to get my full review up of the Peach & Lily Power Cocktail Lactic Acid Repair Serum, which I dearly, dearly love. I'll link you that video if you are interested. But I did get a couple of questions that I wanted to go ahead and answer here. So the first one was, does it have a smell? Well, it is an unscented product, so to me, it, it has maybe a slight botanical smell to it while I'm applying it, but it doesn't linger. However, on that note, please remember that I do not have a highly sensitive nose, so it's, it's very possible other people may have a different experience there, but yeah, to me it doesn't smell like anything. But a really good question that was asked was, what's the pH of the product? Uh, really quickly on this one, so unless a person is using laboratory equipment, please know that the pH of, you know, test strips, which is what I use, is not going to be as reliable of a measure. That's kind of why I've moved away from using it. And yet at the same time, I think it does give you a good estimate, a good range. You know, you can't use a pH test strip and say it has a pH of 3.7. Instead, I'm stuck over here saying uh, it came back as 3.5 to 4 for me. It's, it's somewhere in that range, which is exactly what I expected, that's the right range for lactic acid, so uh, of course it is. I expected Peach and Lily to get that right, and they did. And then I've got three products to share with you that I received in PR. I seem to get the most PR in this price range, which I guess is good as long as I can give you a helpful review. Hopefully I can help you decide whether you want to spend you know, 70-ish dollars on some of these products. Can we actually start with the Foreo Imagination? I feel like this as a product may not appeal to every last one of you, and yet I gotta give Foreo some credit on this. So let's just do it, let's just start with this. This is a DIY mask base. Okay, now I know that most of you watching this channel are probably not DIY skincare enthusiasts. We don't talk about that on this channel. Do I look like I'm over here DIYing skincare or am I buying and testing it, you know? And yet for the right person, which I do think is very, very niche, I, I think it is a good idea. Basically what you're going to get is uh, some t tried and true skincare ingredients such as allantoin, such as panthenol. You're going to get some uh, absorption enhancing ingredients. Because, you know, if you are just throwing banana on your skin, is it really doing anything for you? Is it really sinking into your skin? So yeah, it actually is really a smart idea, and I, I especially, well, actually like both options. This right here is the base that comes in little pouches. This one is about $30. For $40, you can buy the tube. You just squeeze it out to make one mask at a time. Don't store DIY skincare, don't, don't do it. But yeah, you know, realistically speaking, you totally can take oats, grind them up, add some avocado, grind it up, mash it up, add this Foreo Imagination mask base, and you actually can make a, a very nice, calming, soothing, natural-based mask. Alas, it's for such a niche audience if you really think about it, because a lot of people who are DIYing their own skincare are gonna look at this and say, those are chemicals. But you know, if you are somebody who's going, yeah, that's because everything is a chemical, my dear. Well, are you really going to be half DIYing your masks? Do you know what I'm saying? So let me tell you, let me tell you about my story with this mask and how ultimately what I took home from this is I do not have an imagination. No, wait, you all need to hear a story time. You all need some context so you understand about me going into this mask. Okay, so many years ago, <laughs> y'all know you're in for it now. Many years ago, I was invited to a potluck. This was about 10 years ago. I was still a vegan at the time. It was an all vegan potluck and I was so excited. I was over here going, oh, I'm gonna make 
my world-renowned hummus that only I have tried and my family says, yeah, you go ahead, you go ahead and keep eating that hummus, but I am convinced it's better than Sabra. So I labored over my batch of hummus, proudly put it into my Tupperware container and took it to the potluck, where I placed it out with all of the other potluck food. I get all of my food, take some of my own hummus, of course, take other food, I'm sitting there eating it, and I'm like, yeah, this is all, it's all pretty good, it's nice to be at this potluck. Well, I was enjoying the food so much that I went back for seconds. And as I approached the table where all of the food was laid out, I happened to notice that there was now a sign, a sign that somebody had added, apparently quite hastily. Somebody had torn a piece of paper out of this notepad, and with a pencil, they wrote on it, WARNING! This is extremely, underline, 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 hot. And then there was an arrow, poorly drawn, as if the person writing had been in pain, pointing directly to my hummus. My little vegan self was so hurt. Here I had been so cautious in making this hummus. I only used four habaneros. Everyone knows 10 habaneros makes a much better hummus. I scaled it back out of consideration. The audacity. <laughs> okay, the point of this whole story is that I am not the best with recipes. Just because somebody has a master's in nutrition does not mean they are a cook. It's amazing how many people don't know that, actually. It, that, it, it's amazing. That's not at all what I studied. Not at all. So anyway, I get this in. I'm super excited to try it. I run down to the kitchen, and R is already worried because, as just mentioned, not the best with recipes. She's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, oh, I'm gonna make a, a face mask and it's gonna be beautiful and wonderful. And she comes over and she says, you don't have a mortar and pestle. And I'm like, that's fine. I'll, I'll just use stuff that's already ground up. She's like, yeah, what, what are you gonna put in it? Okay, admittedly, without a mortar and pestle, this is maybe a little bit more difficult. So I open the cupboards and I go, oh my gosh, I've got honey. I, I, love, I love honey. I'm gonna put honey in this. My sweetheart is already going, Okay, this is probably not gonna end well. And as I continue to look through the cupboard, I find a bottle of fish oil. Uh, what a rich source of fatty acids. What could possibly go wrong? Fish oil, honey, and the mask base. Perfect! Ara had a pep talk with me, and she did talk me out of that idea. I still managed to make a, a terrible recipe, though, because in place of the fish oil, I decided to go for a nut butter. Let me tell you honestly, my uh, DIY mask was not the most fun thing to remove that I've ever tried. <sighs> my own reptiles were giving me strange looks. So this story is all to tell you. It's a good idea, in theory. I think that what Foreo should do is make sure to include some sample recipes. Wouldn't you think they would do that? They have this Recipes of My Foreo Imagination booklet, which I uh, tore into so much that I, I ripped it somewhere, but they're all, they're all blank! It's all blank! <laughs> You're supposed to write your own ideas on here because you have a good imagination and you are better with recipes than I am. So anyway, I saw on the website that there are, uh, their upcoming extension of the Aforio imagination is they're going to have this box set that includes a mortar and pestle, which is a must, and it's gonna have a recipe booklet. I, I think that that's the only way to go. I mean, unless you are already, you know, well-versed in cooking and, and, and whatnot. You want some of my hummus? So, Tatcha sent me some PR, although it may be the last time. I'm just kidding. I actually, I actually have good things to say about this overall. This is the Tatcha Texture Tonic. This was released in, I believe, December. Uh, so, it is a good idea, I would say. It's a $59 product, which for Tatcha, not too bad. Basically what it is, is a blend of fruit AHA, some niacinamide, some mugwort. It's called a texture tonic, which would make you think it's strong in those AHAs, perhaps, that's what I assumed, but actually, no, it is in fact a more gentle product. We'll look at the ingredients together here, so niacinamide, saccharomyces, tons 
of extract and essential oil ingredients. So this one certainly won't be for everybody. But see, what they're doing with this is they're saying fruit AHAs. And you absolutely are going to get AHA ingredients from apple, lemon. It's not going to be very strong, but yes, those ingredients do contain natural sources of AHA ingredients. So it ends up being interesting in that it comes together to make this gentler alternative to AHA ingredients. The catch for me is that I kind of don't feel this is necessarily all that revolutionary. I feel like Korean skincare brands have been doing something similar for quite some time. Now, it's funny, and I know I've talked about this in the past, my assumption going into Korean skincare was, oh, everything is fragrance-free. And in case you're new to this channel, I, I typically uh, don't seek out essential oil and heavily scented products. My skin does better with a mostly fragrance-free routine, although I can usually slip a little bit of fragrance somewhere into a routine and be okay, usually. Um, yet, the thing is, I found out that Korean products do actually use those ingredients, that there's plenty of brands that do, for example, Neogen. So I guess ultimately, it kind of just reminds me of those products. And as for usage of this, I'm just going to be honest and tell you that I don't have a lot of thoughts on this because I've been really nervous about it. I've tried it a couple of times, and so far, so good, but the thing is, to me, it smells, and I kid you not, exactly like a mojito. I could be wrong, I really, I really don't drink very much, but I think that's what it smells like. And it is very strong. So yeah, I've been, I've been nervous about it, but you know, no immediate reactions, which is not the same as saying it worked for me in the long run, but you know, let me know if any of you have tried it. It's, it's odd, there's really not a lot of reviews for that one yet. One more product here, the Philosophy Hope in a Jar Biome Balance Glow Serum. So thanks for sending this over, Philosophy. It's $69, and here's the thing. I am not opposed to products being at a higher price point. The tricky thing to me is that I am just not really sure that this lives up to that price tag. Prebiotic hyaluronic acid and AA2G. So what they're talking about, the prebiotic, first of all, I, we talked a lot about the microbiome last week, right? The thing about all of this research is that it, it is new. It is new. Prebiotics are the food for bacteria, but the thing is that sounds so fancy. Uh, what we're really talking about is fiber. And then AA2G is an antioxidant ingredient. Somewhere else in this video I already talked about the prevalence of antioxidants, right? Oh, flower beauty. And there's a lot of fragrance in this particular product. It smells like a philosophy perfume. And I, I know I'm over here being hard on this product. I know I'm essentially making a sign that says, warning, not hot enough big arrow. And they were nice enough to send it to me, and you know, some cosmetic formulators worked on it. I get all of that, but at the same time, just why? I guess it could be fine for someone who has good skin and doesn't really need a serum for all that much, but at the same time, I would reiterate, not everybody needs a dang serum. We've been stuck since 2021 in this everything's a serum mode. Not everybody needs a serum. It's a treatment step. If your skin is fantastic, Use moisturizer, SPF, and cleanser. I gotta once again butt into my own video because I noticed something a little funky with this product and hopefully you noticed that what I'm actually upset about with this isn't as much about the product. I mean, it, it looks fine. They say it's lightweight, instantly hydrated skin. I did try this a couple of times. It's very scented, so I didn't want to stick with it. But yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's fine. My problem, the reason I'm being hard on it in this video is because this price point, the $69 price point, I just cannot make sense of why it was priced so high. Now, here's the thing. $69 is out of stock on Sephora. Look at this. Look over here on the Ulta website. 45. This is the same product. So at this point, I'm finding myself thinking, did Sephora make a mistake? Is that why it's out of stock on the Sephora website? 
Let me just be honest with you. You know, I've done this for so long. I'm so used to uh, seeing price points and m my issue that I was having with this is it just did not make sense to me at a $69 price tag. At 45 and it's Ulta, you know they'll have some kind of 50% off. 22.50. Yeah, I mean, it's fine for people who like a lot of scent and a little bit of glow. But if this is all a mistake on Sephora's behalf, then I apologize too. I will tell you, if you did happen to purchase this at this price point, I would contact Sephora. I, I genuinely think this is a mistake on their website. I wanted to talk about the Glow Recipe Plum Plump Hyaluronic Acid Moisturizer because of course I did. Have you met me? I love so much what they've done here. So it's a refill system. $39 buys you the bottle, which is apparently a nice glass bottle, $33 for the refill. That's an amazing price point. You know, every other company that's done these refill systems has been pretty expensive. I shouldn't say every company because Verst does have the refill systems and they're quite affordable, but most of the time it seems these are more expensive. Tata Harper, um, oh gosh. What's, what's their name? I own their products. Cora. There it is. <laughs> My brain was delivering one letter at a time there. Anyway, this looks nice. Uh, I think that, you know, Glow Recipe is a brand. It doesn't work for everybody. It is a brand that has some amount of fragrance. Although I will say, I think more people did well with the Plum Plump Serum. Now, I decided not to buy this just yet, although I almost did, but I decided to wait because I noticed the reviews were saying, in spite of saying hyaluronic cream, they say it is more of a gel type of product. Another one that I've been asked quite a bit about is the Biosant Squalene and Copper Peptide Rapid Plumping Serum. Okay, so since I get so many questions about copper peptide, yo, I want to make a video about this and tell you what results I see from copper peptide. The problem, though, the holdup, the reason I haven't done it yet is because <laughs> I'm not sure I see any results. It's tricky though, it's one of few peptides where you do have to be careful what you're combining it with, or at least hypothetically you do. So I'm really trying to get through uh, my The Ordinary bottle first, but again, you know, that's tricky to say, oh well, uh, if The Ordinary product works, then all copper peptide products work. That's a, a bit of a limiting perspective too. So I, I will say I've heard quite a bit of good things about this serum. I believe this one released in December. You got your blue color, so it looks like it will be a pretty decent amount of copper peptide, which, by the way, is typically only, only 1%. We have some other peptides. We have green tea, turmeric, other antioxidant-rich ingredients. Yeah, no, no fragrance, no essential oil. It just is uh, $68. But hey, 68 for 1.7 fluid ounces, which is nice, and at least I do understand why it's that price point, you know? And my final product to end this video on is actually a truly brilliant idea, at least I think so. This is a brand new release from... But that is it, my friends. We've come to the end of what's new in skincare, January of 2022. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I feel like we both covered a lot and actually not a lot, so there's plenty of other releases that have happened these last two months. Feel free to share your thoughts in the comment section below. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to give it a like and hit subscribe, and I will see you all next time.